viewers this is dr nila with the second lecture of cancer biology series in the first lecture we have already discussed the differences between the normal cells and the cancer cells we have also discussed the neoplasm that is the tumor and also differentiated the tumor into benign tumor and malignant tumor in case of benign tumor we have discussed its characteristic features and malignant tumors has also been discussed with its characteristic features then we went on to describe different types of cancers on the basis of the layers and in which they are formed that is carcinoma sarcoma and leukemia then we and then finally we went on to describe polycythema vera which is a type of rbc cancer in today's lecture we will further uh, go in the detail of cancer biology in this lecture we would this describe the two basic reasons that are responsible for the formation of cancer cells first is the genetic changes that take place and the second is the epigenetic changes what do we mean by genetic changes we already know that a particular gene is comprised of dna and that dna is made up of nucleotides suppose these are the nucleotides if a uh, nucleotide gets mutated or there is some how this is or somehow any change takes place in the sequence of the dna of particular gene then what happens the genetic change then we say that genetic change has taken place which may lead to cancer this is the first reason and then we can go on to the next reason that is the epigenetic changes before talking about epigenetic changes let's say let's see what epigenetics actually is in case of epigenetics what happens is we can change the phenotype without changing the genotype this is what epigenetics means we already know that all the cells have the same amount have the same quality or have the same sequence of dna basically then how can we say that one cell functions as a liver cell another cell functions as a muscle cell why cannot a muscle cell function as a liver cell or vice versa this is because of epigenetic changes because the gene silencing or gene activation takes place with uh, with sequences or with uh, uh, things like dna methylation or dna acetylation in case of methylation what happens when the dna methylation takes place cytosine Uh, the cytosine present in the dna is attached to by methyl group and this gene now becomes inactive this is called as gene silencing in case of uh, histone tails in case of histones are the proteins on which the dna is wrapped in case of histones the tail of the histone when being attached by an acetyl group the uh, the dna can be activated or when again attached by a methyl group the dna can be deactivated or the gene can be silenced so these are the mechanism by which epigenetics can affect uh, uh, the cancer cells whenever the uh, whenever the gene is uh, activated to a large extent cancer can take place or somehow or somehow if any uh, the uh, uh, tumor suppressor in in case of tumor suppressor gene the uh, or in case of proto oncogene if the gene is activated then it can lead to cancer or in case of a tumor suppressor gene if if it if its effect is suppressed then it can also lead to cancer so these this is all about uh, epigenetics in short we can say that the phenotype of a cell phenotype can be changed without change in the genotype so this is all about epigenetics now coming to the process of transformation transformation in in a literal terms means change so when a normal cell gets changed into a tumor cell this process is called as transformation so in another words transformation is the process of the change of normal cell into tumor cell okay so now coming to the most important part of this lecture is the properties of cancer cells this uh, this portion has been asked in many life science examination so we should uh, understand this uh, uh, this thing very very nicely so first uh, first uh, property of cancer cell coming to the first property of cancer cell is the density dependent inhibition so in case of density dependent inhibition what do we mean is 
normal cells proliferate up to a finite density see say if you have a culture tube and if you put your cancer cells in that they will uh, in, in you, if you put a normal cells in that they will divide up to a they, or they will proliferate up to a finite limit or their density would be finite but what will happen in case of cancer cells the uh, proliferation would be infinite that is their division would be infinite therefore cancer cells uh, the growth of the cancer cells is infinite or it cannot be measured uh, the uh, cancer cells the proliferation depends upon basically uh, growth factors in case of normal cells the proliferation depends upon the growth factors so what do we mean uh, here that if the growth factors is high the density becomes high in case of normal cells and when the growth factors are low the density remains low in case of normal cells but overall the density is finite but in case of cancer cells what happens is but in case of cancer cells what happens is the growth factor requirement for cancer cells is very less and moreover what happens is the uh, cancer cells have a capacity to produce their growth factors by themselves they can produce their own growth factors so these are the reasons that the growth of the cancer cells is infinite or they can grow to an unlimited unlimited extent okay so this is meant by uh, this is meant by density uh, dependent inhibition i have put a cross in front of the cancer cells which means that the density dependent inhibition is not followed by cancer cells now coming to the next property of cancer cells contact inhibition so now we have seen now we know that whenever we put a uh, normal cells in a uh, culture plate or culture tube what happens is they start growing but whenever a normal cell comes in contact with another cell it soon realizes that a mono layer has been formed a mono layer has been formed and it stops its proliferation so in case of normal cells what do we observe that we observe that a normal array or mono layer of cells has been achieved a mono layer of cells has been achieved but in case of cancer cells what happens is that these a mono layer is not achieved but the cells move on to each other after dividing their division does not stop even after coming in contact with the neighbor cell they start growing on to each other so not a mono layer but multi layers are formed and this arrangement is not ordered it is disordered and multi layered as compared to the mono layered or ordered array in case of normal cells so this is all about contact inhibition now coming to the next uh, uh, property of cancer cell that is immortalization see the normal cells at an average uh, proliferate up to 50 generations that means it can grow and it can divide up to 50 generations that is a normal figure both in vitro and Uh, in vivo but this cannot be followed but this is not followed by the cancer cells they can they can grow up to n number of generations therefore the cancer cells are called as immortal cells this is the reason why cancer cells is called are called as immortal cells that is why i have put a cross in front of cancer cells that is the rule of mortalization that is followed by the normal cells is not followed by the cancer cells similarly was the case of contact inhibition which is not followed by the cancer cells that is why i have put a cross in front of cancer cells okay now coming to the two most important properties of cancer cells that is invasiveness and metastasis we have already discussed these properties in the last in the last lecture but in this lecture we would discuss them we would discuss these properties in more detail so what do we mean by invasiveness and uh, metastasis in case of invasiveness a term has been written here that is direct migration so when a cancer cell detaches itself from the bunch of cells uh, uh, which of which it is a part and then moves 
to a nearby area directly then this process is called as direct migration see uh, i will show you i will show this process by means of a diagram suppose these are the cells and this uh, this is a cancer cell it detaches from this portion and moves on to a nearby portion which i will show by this red marker it forms it comes over here and it starts dividing over here thus infecting this region also then this process would be called as invasiveness this process would be called as invasiveness and and if this cell takes the route of by by means of lymphatic system and by means of blood vessels if this uh, goes to a far off region in the body by means of lymphatic system or by means of blood vessels then this process would be called as the metastasis therefore the difference between invasiveness and metastasis is that in case of invasiveness direct migration takes place and in case of metastasis lymphatic system or blood vessels are utilized in order to move to a far off place in the body or in order to move to a different place of a place in the body and thus causing cancer or tumor cells in that place also so these are some of the properties of cancer cells there are many more important properties of cancer cells which we will discuss in the next or upcoming lectures if you liked my video please click the like button and subscribe to my channel thank you and have a great day